And welcome to the Rider's Life, a place where you get the sights, sounds, smells, taste of my particular Rider's Life while I'm outside with the cars going by. My particular Rider's Life and where you get the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me God, he is with Dominique. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Smash the like button, punch the bell for notifications. Or tap it. So you don't miss out on one single exciting video. Go to vinzandry.com for all the new exciting thrillers. White Wedding is killing it. Our Darkest Secret. Um, Hitchhiker. That one's cool. That one's a very cool read. Um, Twilight Zone-ish. And so many more. Uh, the Squatters, the, the cover was just revealed this morning. I threw that up on Instagram. And a couple other places. Um, great cover. Now I just got to get through the edit because, uh, but I'm so so busy writing the bones and other duties, other writing duties that uh, I haven't been able to get to it. Um, but it looks like I have no assignments between now and the end of the weekend, so I will get that moving and get it over to my uh, copy editor. So he can go over any of the usual spelling and grammar mistakes that I tend to make. I used to be worse. Um, I still have trouble with effect and affect, even though it's simple. And what else do I have trouble with? I have trouble with others, too, even after all this time. Um, that's why whenever there's calls... Or, you know, when I used to be looking for lots of freelance gigs and stuff like that. Whenever there was calls for copy editors or even just editors. I would skip it because I would suck. Um, but I can write. And that's what counts. And that's what counts. Um, I don't have anything that specific to talk about today. Other than I came across uh, one of my essays, which will be up on, it was up on Kindle Vela for a month, so now I can put it out there, um, because you can put things out there um, after a month, um, and it'll be out tomorrow on my Substack about uh, why every every story, every book I write is a little piece of real estate in Manhattan, and I just keep building my tower bigger and bigger and bigger and occasionally I'll license some of that out in the form of foreign rights at base you license it out as an ebook paper and audio there's three right there um, I did get a letter from someone who wants to put um, the shroud key or not well the shroud key and um, the entire Chase Baker series into a comic book form, um, and I, you know, I sent a letter back, like, with a CC to my agent, like, what do you have in mind? And I haven't heard anything back from them, so maybe they weren't legit. I don't know, um, but it was worth writing the email back to them. But I have not heard back anything since. Um, but that again, but that's another example of of licensing comic books are big um, of course there's movies TV Blake Crouch has that one sewn right up man well I think his agent's David Hale Smith who's a friend of mine and we've tried to work together in the past but it's never worked out for one reason or the other but he's a great agent great agent um, and of course Blake does great work so you put those two things together and magic happens um, it's the one market I have not been able to um, capitalize on. I've come close. So close. Had deals on the table. And then for one reason or another, they got pulled. Um, that's why I always say Hollywood. Uh, I'm just going to generalize it and call it Hollywood. You know, like movies and TV is made all over the place now. Um, and streaming. Um, 
But I'm just going to generalize it by saying Hollywood because I'm basically a 20th, 20th century guy. Um, Hollywood's a crapshoot, right? Um, it's kind of like the lottery, I guess. Um, but some of these guys, once they break in, and if a show does pretty well or a movie, they get more and more. Uh, my buddy Dave Zelterman has, I think he's had at least two major motion pictures made. Um, but here's the key. Everyone's under this impression all the time. Well, first of all, back up a little bit. Like, whenever I put a book out, um, or a traditional publisher puts a book out, like, like that's never enough. Like, when I'm talking to, say, family and friends, right? It's always like, well, when's the movie going to be made? Like, well, well, there's a book out first, you know, like, you know, like, that's sort of accomplishment, you know? You know, now they're just used to it. Like, of course you have a book out. Like, when are you going to get a movie? It's, it's kind of like, I'm at the point where they're just kind of like, you know, like, they used to whisper, like, when I was in, at, right after grad school, you know, even though I, I quickly got a deal after grad school, but in between graduation and that nine months I spent without a deal, that was when people started whispering, like, you know, he gave up this big business to publish, you know, publish novels, and he hasn't done anything since graduate school, and he's broke. You know, so they'd be whispering, you know, like, mm -hmm. and then finally I scored a book deal, and like, okay, oh, wow, okay, impressive, you know, good, good, good. But now it's to the point where it's like, well, how come he hasn't gotten a movie? How come he hasn't gotten a Netflix series? There's got to be something wrong. <laughs> or maybe it's my imagination. Because, you know, you work alone, you think about these things, you know. Um, but it's like they say, like, um, don't ever worry about it, what anybody thinks of you, because they don't. They don't think about you you're, nearly as much as you think about you. So um, something will come through eventually, I'm convinced. Um, if I keep sparring, punching. Speaking of that... Speaking of sparring and punching, I'm going to meet my buddy Tom Shrek at 4.50 exactly. Tom, as you know, is Albany's other best-selling thriller writer. And uh, he's a boxer, and he's not a referee, a professional referee, but he's a professional scorekeeper. So like, you might see him at Madison Square Garden at a fight, like sitting ringside carefully observing the fights and writing down, you know, whatever punches and jabs are scoring. Good guy. Really good guy. Speaking of Blake Crouch, I remember um, him saying, like, Tom Shrek, he's good people. He's good people. And that's a really great compliment um, because it's the truth. Tom, if you're out there, shout out to you. I'll see you in a little bit. Um, so there's all that going on. Um, Bones is going well. Um, I had to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, with a thriller like that, a suspense thriller, psychological suspense with a little horror mixed in, you got to kind of lay the groundwork. You know, you can't just go dive right into it like some of my action adventure stuff. You, know, you got to kind of like lay the groundwork and then sort of build up, you know, to this excitement. Like, set the you know, really, really make, start making things quite tense. And that's where I'm at right now. Um, so there's all that. Did I see Julian Assange just been freed? Is that true? Or did I dream it? Um, great if he has. Um, I'm not sure who's responsible. Couldn't be Uncle Joe, could it? Well, he doesn't know what's going on anyway, so it would have to be one of his per people. Um, I don't know, but it's good if he does. And my friend uh, John Hemingway made it to Madrid safely. <laughs> he, he sent me a, a voice message this morning, and he's like, and it was a Boeing. He white-knuckled it the whole way from New York, or no, from uh, Miami to Madrid. He's like, it's just waiting for a piece of the plane to fall off. You know, and he's a pretty brave guy, you know. He's only going to Spain to run with the bulls, you know. Nothing too unsafe. 
but if if you can check out um, check out his brand new mystery. Um, what's it, Ron Echavira or something like that? Anyway, but just check it out. It's all over the place. Um, I wrote the forward for it. I was uh, I was very honored to write Ernest Hemingway's grandson's new book, new books forward. Um, and I think I did okay job. He loved it. So I was like, all right, did a good job. Um, so check that out. It's a really good book, too. Uh, the new Hemingway is, I think, just as simple but effective, if that's even the way to put it. Um, his language, he just lays out the story, it, you know, and dialogue's good, and um, you're into it immediately. Um, there's similarities in their styles, but but uh, John's style is, is different from Papa's, and uh, no way would he want to copy Papa because that, it just wouldn't be right. No one can copy Papa at all, um, even though people have tried. The only one who came close, I think, is Ray Carver. But then again, Ray Carver was Ray Carver. You know, he was a seminal influence back when I was in writing school. But after a while, I was like, I would read his, one of his, you know, his stories were so depressing that it was like, all right, I, I can't, I don't know if I could bear to read another one. Um, but they are good stories. Check out, if you are interested, check out Ray Carver's collection of short stories. Um, it's brilliant. Came out in the early 80s, something like that, mid 80s. Um, some of my writing professors were either taught by him um, or knew him. Back before he, uh, I think he died of brain cancer, um, which is a shame. Chain smoker, alcoholic, bad combination. In any case, that's all I got for you today. It's a beautiful day out. I'm going to go for a walk, come back, edit what I wrote today, get it out there, and then I'm going to meet Tom. And uh, again, I don't think I have another guest this week because I got appointments all the rest of the week. Um, it's going to be tough enough getting the work count in. Um, but next week I'll try to have more guests so that I don't bore you to death. All right, everybody. Ciao, ciao.